Welcome to the Toxics Reduction via Responsible E-Waste Management video series, presented to you by the Delta Institute with funding from the US EPA Great Lakes Restoration Initiative. In this video, Roger Grivey, Communications and Certifications Manager with Affinity Information Management, brings us a presentation on Responsible E-Waste Management. This content was originally created for a workshop series in Toledo and Cleveland, Ohio. I'm Roger Grivey from Affinity Information Management, an electronics recycler in Toledo, Ohio, to talk about responsible e-waste management. A couple of topics here. First, we'll talk about the process of uh, e-waste uh, recycling, and then what focus materials should be considered. Next, data security and implications of that. And finally, some information about the R2 standard and background as a, as a way to tie it all together. On the client side, it's important for the client to learn about the process overall and then pre-sort their materials to make it easier for both the client and the recycler to handle it and then to stage the materials properly. For instance, for the materials that might be available for resale to not throw them haphazardly into a large container with materials to be uh, demanufactured and thus maintaining the value of the materials for resale. Value recovery is another important consideration. And finally, the documentation of the entire process for internal sustainability reports or for environmental targets and objectives. The recycling process itself on the part of the recycler begins with an initial sort. Typically the hierarchy is reuse, recover, or dispose. Many recyclers do not have the dispose part in their process because they have a no landfill policy. So the first two are much more important. What materials can be reused and what materials have component elements that can be recovered. The first step in that is to test and then refurbish any materials that could be reused. And they're sent then to wholesalers or to auctions if they are functional. And they're sent to demanufacturing if they're not functional. In the demanufacturing process, the materials are separated into component parts. For instance, a desktop computer would have the circuit boards removed, the RAM chips removed, the power supply removed, any drives removed, finally the aluminum case, and the plastic outside casing would all be sent to different downstreams for subsequent processing. The commodity sale is the final destination for materials that have been collected for shredding, for smelting, or other downstream processing. One way to consider all this is through the concept of focus materials. Focus materials were developed as an idea, as a learning and prioritization tool for both clients and for recyclers. It's important to begin the process with focus materials because it makes it easier to think about. For employee or customer or even public education, it's uh, easy to think about a few things that need more attention than everything else. It makes other materials also easier to process if customers or recyclers know they are not as important as the focus materials themselves. Also, other materials are not as harmful if they are mishandled. Focus materials include batteries, for obvious reasons, PCBs, which are found in electronics before 1978, liquid-filled transformers, ballasts from fluorescent fixtures and things of that sort, CRTs, which of course contain lead in the glass funnels in the tubes themselves. Mercury, which is contained not only in thermostats and switches, but also in CFL and CCFL light bulbs. CCFL bulbs are contained in fax machines and scanners. It's the little tube that lights everything up, and every one of those tubes contains mercury. Toner is also a focus material. Ink cartridges, however, are not. And finally, circuit boards are another focus material. Data security is an important consideration when looking at electronic recycling. There are a number of data bearing devices. In addition to the typical hard drives found in computers and laptops, there's also hard drives found in many network copiers and in cell phones and cameras. Uh, many devices have, have chips or small drives that will hold data. It's important for a customer and a recycler to assume that there is sensitive information on these materials and treat them accordingly. There are two standards used to treat these materials. One's from Department of Defense and the other from the National Institutes of Standards and Testing. 
and they both prescribe in great detail how the material should be um, erased so that it is unreadable. Finally, there's physical destruction of, of the data bearing devices to physically destroy the hard drives or disks so that they are rendered unreadable. The chain of custody is also important, including things like how these materials are handled on the client side, how they are transported to the recycler, and then at the recycler, how they are stored in a secure fashion within the recycling facility before they are either erased or physically destroyed. This all comes together in the Responsible Recycling, or R2, standard. It was a standard that started in 2008, and it is granted after a two-stage audit from a certified external auditor. At this point, there are fewer than 200 companies worldwide certified to this standard, and about 15 of those are in the state of Ohio. It combines the need for an environmental health and safety management system with environmental concerns. It lasts for three years and has annual surveillance audits in between the three-year certification periods. The Responsible Recycling Standard has many elements of ISO 14001, including process mapping, a plan do check act model for internal operations, environmental targets and objectives, process-based internal auditing, root cause and risk analysis, and things like that, all contained in some sort of environmental system so that you can justify the operations of the recycler. But in addition to all that, there is a stringent downstream vendor verification so that the recycler must prove where the materials are being sent all the way to their final disposition. The data security process is also audited as part of R2 certification. As they select the recycler, a client should look for a responsible and professional partner to assist them in the fairly complicated process of disposal of e-waste. The R2 and other standards, such as eStewards, is an easy way for a client to evaluate whether or not a recycler is acting in a professional and responsible manner. In this way, a customer can answer their own questions relating to things such as continual improvement and sustainability studies. More information is available at r2solutions.org.